Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. With Avada Forms you can make anything from simple contact or subscription forms through to conditional and even multi-step forms. In this video, we're going to look at how to create multi-step forms. For larger forms, setting up your form in this way can make the amount of information required to complete a long form appear more organized and less overwhelming. Plus, multi-step forms are proven to result in more conversions than single-step forms. Let's have a look at how easy they are to make. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. For this video, I've imported the bed and breakfast pre-built, and here on the contact page, I'm going to change this form out for a multi-step form. But as usual, to create my form, I need to go to Avada Forms to start. I'll just call my form multi-step and click on New Form. Now if I go to Avada Studio, there are a few examples of multi-step forms here. These are good to import if you want to see how they are structured, or to use as a starting point. But for this video, I will build my own. But I could actually just use one of these forms for the first step in my multi-step form. Let's do that. I'll just start with this one called Reservation Form. I'll make sure it's on Local Colors and Typography, and import that. Now we have other videos on creating Avada Forms, so I won't spend time here adding form elements. Instead, I'll just customize it with the form elements I want, and then we can transform it to a multi-step form. I'll be back in a sec. OK, I have now rearranged and added other content to this form, but at this point, it's all just one long normal form. This is where multi-step forms come in handy, as they are not so overwhelming to the user. To prepare for a multi-step form, I have separated my various proposed form sections into different containers. If we just look at the navigator, we can see I have four containers here called Details, Choices, Extras, and Finalize. When you have a multi-step form, you also need some sort of navigation. There are a lot of options here. The first one is to add a Submit button element at the bottom of each section. In a multi-step form, this element only works as a normal Submit button when it's in the last section. But if you add one in previous sections, it works as a navigation button. So before I add my first form step, I'll just add a 1-1 column under the Check in Time column, and then I'll scroll to the bottom and clone my Submit button to get the styling from that, and then move it back up to the column I just created, and I will edit it and call it Next Step. So now to transform this into a multi-step form, I just need to add my form step elements. This is done by clicking the Add Container icon in the top container here, and heading to the Special tab. Here we can see the Form Step element. I'll just add one of those, and it comes in directly under the first container. I want one of these for each of the sections in my form, so I will drag this up above the first container and edit it. I'll call this Step 1 Details, and I'll just add an icon. Technically you don't actually need a Form Step at the top here, as the form loads on the first section anyway, but I want to configure some navigation for this form, and so this first section needs one for the title and icon. And now I'll just clone this first form step and move it down under the first section container. This will be the step to section 2 of the form, and so this time I will give it a title of Step 2, Choices. And I'll just add an icon here as well. Yeah, that will do. OK, now I want some navigation in the second section here. I'll clone that column in the first section with the Next Step button in it, and drag it to the bottom of this container here. And now I will add some more navigation. This time I want to add a way for the user to go back to the previous step. You can add a button, an icon, a text block, anything that takes a link. I'll add a button. And for this we need a normal button element. I'll just clone this first column, and delete the Select Field element, and then add a button element. For the button URL, I'll select Dynamic Content, and here we can see Dynamic Content called Previous Step under Avada Form. That's what we want here. Note you can also set up Next Step navigation in this way as well, with the Next Step Dynamic Content. In that way, for example, you could have two arrows navigating back and forth between the various form sections. In my case, I will now call my button Previous Step, and now I need to style it. I'll just make it match the Submit button, so I will head to the Design tab and select Custom. Here I'll make the start colors to be color 4, and the button text to be color 8. Then I'll select the hover state. And here I'll also make the start colors to be color 4, 
but for the hover state I will also edit the global color options and add minus 20 into the alpha channel. And I'll set my hover button text color to color 8 here as well. OK, if I scroll down a bit, I will add a 6 pixel border radius all around. And set the size to extra large. Finally, I will set button span to yes. OK, all good. Before we move on to the third container, just note here how there are three breakfast choice columns. These have conditional logic on them, based on what the user selects back in the number of guests field in the first section. So if I edit the first one, and go to conditionals, we can see that this element only displays if the number of guests is greater than zero. Likewise, the next element will only display if the number of guests is greater than one, and the third will only display if the number of guests is greater than two. We have another video about how to create conditional forms, so I will link that below the video here. OK, let's move on. I'll add a new container, and head to the Special tab, and add another form step here. I'll call this one Step 3, Extras, and search for the cocktail icon. OK, all good. For the next container, I just need to clone my previous and next buttons into here, and add another form step. This last step will be called Finalize, and I'll add an email icon. Again, I'll just clone the previous step column and move it into this container, and at the bottom we have our original Submit button element. This is also where you want to place the Notice element, as this is where the user actually submits the form. OK, our form is all set up now, so let's go and set the form options. Now you set the options on a multi-step form in exactly the same way as you do with a normal form. You configure the Submission and Notification tabs, and any confirmations, as well as the Appearance tab. What is different with a multi-step form, however, is the Step Progress tab. Let's have a look at that. The first option here is called Form Steps Navigation, and this allows you to add either a timeline or a progress bar at either the top or bottom of your form. I will select Timeline, and it appears at the top here. OK, let's configure this. To start, I will set a 50 pixel bottom margin to the Steps Wrapper Margin field to push the form content down a little. The next option controls the background colour, and here there are three states, Default, Active and Completed. The default colour appears to be colour 5, and I'm good with that. But for the active state, I might also set colour 5, and add 10 to the luminosity field in the global colour options. And for the completed state, I'll select 5 again, but this time I'll set minus 10 into the luminosity field. To make these steps a little bigger, I might also add some top and bottom padding. And to match the other buttons, I'll add a 6 pixel border radius all around. I don't want a border on these, so I can skip that in the next few options. And with the step justification, I might change that to space between. And I will also change the step separator to solid, and I'll just reduce the between step separator width back to 1. Yeah, that's starting to look good. OK, after this there's a bunch of options around whether to show step numbers, icons or none, as well as icon size and positioning options. Likewise, there's some typography options at the bottom here, so really you can customise this as much as you want. Actually, I just want to change the last option here. The steps title colour option also has three states, and I want mine to be colour 1 on all of them. So I'll just select active and change that, and do the same for completed. OK. And with that, our form is done. Let's save this, and head to the contact page to add it. I'll just refresh this so it picks up my new form. I'll delete these two columns, and add a full width column under my title here. I'll edit that and add some padding all around, maybe 50 pixels. And on the background tab, I'll add color 3. I might also set some animation on this column. So on the Extras tab, I'll scroll down and set the animation to Fade from the bottom at 0.8 seconds with a 0.2 second delay. OK, so now let's add my form. I'll add a Nevada form element to the column, and I'll select my multi-step form. And here it is. Let's now save this page so we can see how it operates on the front end. As the page loads, we can see our animation, and here is the first section of my form. I'll just enter some dummy content so we can continue, as most of these are required fields. Just a name, a phone number, and an email address. 
and I'll just select two guests so we can see the conditional fields at work. I'll pick a date and a check-in time and now we're ready to click on next step. And as we can see this takes us to the next section where we have both previous and next step navigation and the timeline is showing us where we're at. I'll just choose the boho room with veranda as that sounds nice and let's have a fruit platter and a continental breakfast for our two guests. Next step takes us to the extras section where we can select some goodies. How about everything except the guided tour? Okay, I'll click once more on next step and that takes us to the finalized section. Here we can add any additional comments and the button at the bottom is now a normal submit button. And this will submit our reservation in the way we have configured the form. Okay, in the real world your forms might be vastly different from this and there are a lot of options here. But hopefully this video helps you to understand how to configure multi-step forms and how these can be used in many different ways. Let us know in the comments what you have used it for. Okay, this concludes our video on how to make a multi-step form with Avada Forms. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.